So here on FTD Facts, we've looked at the countries of Germany and Denmark, and we've learned a lot about them. And as a matter of fact, we've bounced back and forth between these two countries to find out what is great about them in their own particular individual ways. However, for today on FTD Facts, just for fun, we are going to look at the country of Denmark and Germany and see which one is better. Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to FTD Facts. My name is Dave Wapple, and welcome to a channel where I look at countries and cultures and we go into great detail to learn about them now of course you're looking at this video title and you're going wait a minute what are you trying to say well here i don't specifically like to say which country is better that's really for you guys to decide they are just fun videos but the point of these videos is to really to get neighboring countries to actually learn about each other and the cool statistics within each nation that being said guys if you're liking this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up because we're always doing denmark content and we're doing german content so so if you guys want more content around that sort of stuff, be sure to hit the like button because we will look into it. But either way, let's get started looking at the country of Germany and looking at the country of Denmark. Now, although the two do have some very similar things within them, they are their own particular nations and they have their own individual history. But to start this video, we need to start looking at the very basic information and that is the population. For example, within Germany, let's start off with that. It has a population of 82,800,000 people. Now that is of a 2017 estimate, which makes it rank 16th in the world when it comes to population. Of this, its population density sits at 232 people per square kilometer, ranking 58th in the world. But jumping over to Denmark, it has a population of 5,806,015 people, ranking 112th in the world. Now this is going to be a really interesting comparison because, for example, Denmark has a much smaller population, but that doesn't mean it's any less of a country, even though it has like 7% of the amount of population as Germany does. But one of the hardest things with this population is to talk about its density. Because if we were to talk about Denmark not including Greenland and the Faroe Islands, it has a density of 134.76 people per square kilometer. Now moving right along, this is where I get into land size and this is where it gets really interesting. Interesting. Because Germany sits at 62nd in the world with approximately 357,168 kilometers square. And of that, its water percentage is approximately 2.2%. Denmark, however, is way bigger, especially if we include Greenland and the Faroe Islands. Greenland makes up a huge portion of its land. Now, keep in mind, a lot of it is uninhabited, so that's where the population density would go down. Because for land size, Denmark sits at approximately 2.2 million square kilometers, ranking approximately 12th-ish in the world, but keep in mind, it's Greenland that helps contribute to that. Now, I did say this is going to get really interesting because of the population, because for this, we're going to move on to economy. And it's going to be really interesting to see how powerful the economy of Denmark is compared to its actual population size. First of all, however, let's mention money. Now, both countries do keep in mind the money does fluctuate between the two. And the dollar values that we are going to give in this video is based off of the time that we actually recorded this video or uploaded it. Now for Germany, they are a big contributor to the European Union and they actually have adopted the Euro. And for them, when it comes to the conversion in relation to US dollars, one USD equals about 0.88 euros. However, Denmark, although a part of the European Union, it does adopt its own currency and that is the Danish Krone. And in relation to US dollars, one US dollar equals approximately 0.633 DKKs. And to go further into understanding the money and the economy of Denmark and Germany, we need to look at the gross domestic product, in which for these particular videos, we use the purchasing power parity because that is the best way to compare nations. For the GDP purchasing power parity of Germany, it's at approximately $4.373 trillion, ranking fifth in the world. And of that, it does have a GDP per capita of $52,801. And to understand how some of this gross domestic product works, we need to look at the imports and exports, in which for this video, we do get our rates from the OEC. For Germany, they sit at third in the world, exporting approximately $1.32 trillion in goods. Of their total exports, 12% of that is made from cars, 4.6% of that is made from vehicle parts, and 4% of that is packaged medicaments, as well as many other things. For the imports, however, Germany sits at third as well, with $937 billion, 5.4%. 
4% of that is cars, and 2.6% of that is computers, and 26 is also packaged medicaments. Denmark, however, is a lot smaller when it comes to what it gives and what it takes from the world. Because for Denmark, the GDP purchasing power parity is $299.166 billion, ranking 52nd in the world. However, that being said, it's also a very prosperous country because with its population and the amount of money, its GDP per capita is almost equal to Germany making it come in at $51,643, ranking 19th in the world. And for the exports of Denmark, they sit at $84.1 billion, being 37th in the world. And of this, the top exports are 11% packaged medicaments, 3.2% of that is pigs, and 2.4% of that is animal blood or human blood. And for Denmark's imports, they come in at $84.6 billion, ranking 35th in the world, 4.9% of that is cars, 3.4% of that is packaged medicaments, and 2.7% of that is refined petroleum. So we've looked at money, we've looked at population, we've looked at land size, but one thing that we also really need to look at is the living expenses between these two particular nations. Now for me, I use expatisan.com that gives you a general but not completely accurate idea of the living expenses between two nations. With that in mind, if you were to move to Denmark from Germany, in Denmark, food is 37% more expensive than in Germany. Housing is also a whopping 39% more expensive in Denmark. Clothes are 21%, transportation is 10%, personal care is also 18% higher in Denmark, and entertainment is also 29% higher. In total, if you moved to Denmark from Germany, it would be 27% more expensive to live in that country. And to finish it off with economy, let's take a look at the national debt of these countries. Because for the national debt of Germany, they sit at $2,479,381,000,000. Of course, I failed to mention that we're putting this in US dollars, not in euros or in the Danish krone, so we can get a general idea to compare the two. With that in mind, per citizen theoretically owns $29,604. However, Denmark, with its smaller population, is a lot smaller with $125,569,000,000. And of that, the national debt per citizen sits at $22,187. So that's economy, land size, all that stuff out of the way. Let's take a look at military because that's important as well. So for Germany, because it has a bigger population, it has a manpower of 37 million people. Of that, approximately 29,540,000 people are fit for service. However, the total personnel of the military forces of Germany sits at 210,000 individuals. Of that, there is approximately 180,000 active personnel and approximately 30,000 people in reserve units. Denmark, however, is much smaller with a manpower of 2,500,000 people, and of that, 2,020,000 people are actually fit for service. Interesting enough, although for its size, the total personnel sits at approximately 75,150 people, with about 20,800 personnel being active units. However, the interesting part about Denmark is that it has a much higher reserve personnel, and that comes in at 54,350. But keep in mind, that number is really high because Denmark still has a mandatory form of conscription. Now, breaking it down, let's take a look at some of the equipment that Germany and Denmark has. For Germany, they have an aircraft strength of 698. Of that, 92 of these are classified as fighters, in which they use the Typhoon and the Tornado as their main fighter craft. Of that, they also have 169 attack craft and about 345 transport aircraft. Their helicopter strength sits at 375, and of course, of this, they have 47 attack helicopters. Denmark, on the other hand, has an aircraft strength of approximately 113, and of this, they have 33 fighters, in which their main fighter craft is the F-16 Falcon. Unfortunately for Denmark, they do not have any forms of attack aircraft, but their transport aircraft sits at 39. As well, their helicopter strength sits at 35, but they don't have any attack aircraft. Now, although it does seem small, keep in mind, both countries are actually part of NATO and they all kind of defend each other. But however, for ground forces, when it comes to Germany, their combat tanks sits at 543, 
in which they use the Leopard 2 tank. Of course, they have 5,869 armored fighting vehicles and approximately 154 pieces of artillery and 50 rocket projectors. For Denmark, though, they do have 57 combat tanks. Of that, they use the Leopard 2A5. And for armored fighting vehicles, they actually surprisingly have 673. And their total artillery comes in at 12, and they are not known to have any forms of rocket projectors. But let's jump over to the Navy because it's actually rather interesting, these two particular countries. Because for Germany, the country does have approximately 81 Navy assets. Of course, they don't have any aircraft carriers, but they have approximately 10 frigates. Currently, they also don't own any forms of destroyers, but they also have five corvettes and over six submarines and a lot more patrol craft. Denmark, however, has over 90 Navy assets, zero aircraft carriers, nine frigates, zero destroyers, zero corvettes, eight submarines, and a lot of patrol craft. And for both of these countries, when it comes to their budget, Germany's budget sits at $43.757 billion, which is approximately 1.3% of the total GDP. And although Denmark may only have a budget of $3.8 billion, keep in mind it spends a higher percentage of its GDP, coming in at 1.17%. Of course, both countries are well under the recommended 2% that NATO requires. Requires. So there you have it guys that is us looking at the two countries of Denmark and Germany Both of these great nations have their own individual things that make them unique and special And this can either be its traditions and its values or simply just the landscape in which one enjoys But other than that guys, my name is Dave Wapa and I want to just thank you guys for taking the time to learn about these two particular nations And just playing the little game of which country is better let me ask you this, which one do you think is better? And also, what do you like about the other country as well? Let us know down there in the comments section below. As always, if you're liking this video, be sure to hit that big like and that thumbs up. Of course, if it's your first time here and you want to continue learning about different nations, we don't always do which countries are better. They're just the occasional from time to time stuff. We like to go into actual countries themselves and dive into history and all that sort of jazz. So be sure to tune in if you guys are new here and that's the kind of stuff that you like. Hit that subscribe button. But in that, guys, my name is Dave Wapple, and I will see you guys in the next one. Okay, cool. Bye. So you have seen this video. Now the question is, do you want to learn more about Denmark or do you want to learn more about Germany? Beauty is we have done so many videos around these two particular countries. We've learned about their militaries. We've learned about their cultures. So check out some videos here. Also look in our description box below and you'll be surprised. Other than that, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.